Uh, one fact. <laughs> yeah, so uh, as Francesca already informed you, uh, the training session uh, is going to be recorded. So please behave accordingly. Uh, if you don't want uh, yourself to be recorded, uh, you can always switch off uh, your camera and microphone. But other than that, uh, warm welcome once again. This is the triple open science uh, training sessions. This is actually the fourth episode. Uh, where we are going to stay with EOSC and we're going to have a look at state of art and perspectives and governance of this uh, giant endeavor. Um, just a little bit of a practical information before we start. Uh, you can follow uh, the and uh, follow up uh, on the previous episodes of uh, the triple open science training sessions, clicking on the link, go triple. Uh, that EU per trainings, uh, and you can also um, inform yourself here about um, the upcoming training events. Just a little bit of a housekeeping. Uh, as you realized, uh, the session is going to be recorded, and uh, I think you are quite good uh, at Zoom etiquette at this point of lockdown, but still. Um, you are very welcome to use the chat anytime. Uh, I'm going to pick you up your questions and comments from there. Um, if you wish to speak up during the uh, Q&A session uh, followed by Susan's presentation, uh, you are very welcome to do that as well by raising your hand. Um, and I think that's it. Um, so without any further ado, let me introduce you uh, our speaker, our trainer for today, uh, Suzanne Dumoschel, um, and myself. Um, my name is Erzsébet Tocifra, and I'm going to be your moderator today. Um, I don't think I could, uh, I need to introduce Susan to most of you, actually, it would uh, feel uh, pretty weird because uh, she's such a leading figure in Triple's life. Um, but still, so most of you may know that Susan is working at the very large infrastructure Imanum uh, as um, European uh, uh, head of European cooperation. And you may also know uh, actually that the reason why uh, she's with us today, uh, that she was elected as one of the eight honorary members uh, of the EOSC Association Board, Board of Directors for a term of three years. So, um, so um, we are going to uh, talk about how EOSC Association is taking shape and what her work entails in this new organization. Mm, but I wanted to add a couple of uh, less known facts about Susan just to uh, get to know her better. So uh, you may not necessarily know that she has a background in literary studies and also that um, Discovery is an important concept, not only in her professional life, like in Triple, but also uh, in her pastime, as she likes to discover new paths, a uh, new hiking path, while wandering, walking in the forest. Uh, so uh, warm welcome, Susan. And so she's going to talk about uh, today uh, to us how, about how the EOSC governance is changing and what are the next steps for the EOSC implementation. Um, but before getting started, um, my idea was to warm up the floor a little bit and um, uh, I'm going to address one question to Susan and then I'm going to address two questions to you, the attendees. So let's start with Susan. Susan, uh, my question is uh, very easy, but probably entails a quite a complex uh, answer. So um, it's when did you, for, whether you can remember, uh, when did you, the first time you heard this big acronym of EOSC? And could you probably summarize to us briefly how EOSC evolved since then? And I stop sharing. Well, <laughs> thank you, uh, thank you very much, Ergebet, uh, for for this introduction, and thank you uh, also to for accepting to moderate this uh, this session. It's really a pleasure uh, uh, for me to to work with you like that and uh, to uh, to present the So thank you all for all the attendees. Um, 
So about the, the, the question, um, so when I heard first uh, the EOSC acronym, uh, honestly, I can't remember. I know it was at least uh, in 2017, something like that. Uh, the, the only thing I, I remember uh, very clearly is that uh, I, yeah, as soon as I understand that this very big context of European open science cloud uh, yeah, ecosystem, I knew that uh, it will be quite uh, one of the most important thing uh, that, that yeah, we, we have to actually, um, even if you are not, I was not part at all of the, 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 the group of, the, of the, the ecosystem at large of the infrastructure, but, but I knew we, we, we won't have the choice uh, to be part of not because uh, or not because this is the the uh, the, the main road now and that um, uh, I, I knew nothing about it uh, nothing about e infrastructure only about uh, research infrastructure because I was part of Daria at that very moment and uh, but it was clear that uh, we we have to to be part of that and we have to uh, to make sure that the SSH will be heard uh, uh, in the OSC so I did my best. Uh, very step by step to uh, to uh, to integrate uh, this quite close uh, close network. Uh, so this is the, the first thing I can say, and how it evolves. Um, I think at the at the beginning it was like um, the London fog, you know, <laughs> something very yeah, not, not clear at all. Um, I cannot say that it's clear now because it's still a lot of parts are still unclear. But uh, but it, the, the fog tried to is going to disappear, uh, yeah, progressively. And now, uh, especially now that we have this legal entity uh, since uh, last uh, July, uh, the the association for the EOSC, um, we are getting more organized. So and, and I think more inclusive. Uh, as well, because at the beginning it was uh, only something uh, for the, um, yeah, for uh, people who were uh, close to each other, very, uh, yeah, not, not very, uh, not an open network, and and now it's more and more open, so it's uh, it's good. Thanks a lot, Susan. Yes, yes uh, uh, I can only echo your point on inclusiveness, um, especially with social sciences and humanities disciplines. Otherwise, uh, the O within the EOSC acronym is not really uh, the case. So now, before we get to Susan's presentation and she, uh, before she elaborates on um, all these issues, um, let us hear a little bit your approaches, your ideas about EOSC a little bit. Let me reshare my screen and you will see the opening questions uh, as soon as I, okay. So, you know, one thing that uh, we've been thinking about while uh, putting together this training session is that in many cases in discussions, policy discussions, infrastructure discussions, about the or around the EOSC, um, there is a very probably inaccurate perception that puts forward as if there would be one EOSC, like one CERN or one Amazon. Uh, while in fact, in practice, in reality, I think all of us who already heard about the EOSC or are involved in the development of the EOSC in one way or another, we are actually uh, very aware that the EOS can indicate many things, many things from many perspectives to many people. So our opening question is, what do you think the EOS is primarily about? Go to menti.com. I think uh, here again uh, at this stage of uh, online conferencing, uh, you might get this uh, Mentimeter routine already and use the code which uh, I'm or somebody uh, is going to, ah, okay, Francesca already put it to the chat and type your answer, okay? So uh, we are going to give you a little bit of a time for silent typing, sharing your ideas. Come 
Unfortunately, uh, since we don't have a Mentimeter subscription, I couldn't really embed nicely uh, the slides, but uh, we can uh, still see how the results are unfolding. So let me reshare this other screen of mine so that we can see the answers. Okay. Very interesting. Federation of different services and infrastructures. It like, sounds like a textbook definition. Storing research data. Federating open science infrastructure. A low cross domain research sharing data, reuse collaboration, providing a steady infrastructure for reusable services to European researchers or research centers, sharing standards, best practices, and technology to create a system of fair data and services, another very accurate, uh, almost again, a textbook like uh, uh, interpretation or definition. And finally, EOSC is about creating single entry points to federated infrastructure, hiding the complexities for researchers. A very interesting point regarding uh, hiding the complexities. So thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, that was uh, quite interesting. And I think we are now ready to, like we brought our, each other and ourselves into this EOSC thinking mode now. Now I think I can give the floor to Susan to further elaborate about the complexities that we are about to hide from researchers in an EOSC context. Are you ready, Susan? Sure. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, so first, before before starting, I'd like to uh, to tell you that uh, I've prepared, uh, so I have 60 slides uh, for today, which is uh, of course a lot, so uh, I'm not sure I won't uh, enter into all the detail of the slide. So maybe what I can offer uh, today is um, starting by knowing what are your needs here in order to uh, to fit uh, uh, to to what you what you need. Uh, so just to maybe I can share the, the my screen to show you the, the the outline of what I'd like to to present. So yeah, can you see it? Yeah, yes, yes. perfect. So here, yeah. This is what I prepared. Uh, EOSC ecosystem, the complex organization, so the actors, the partnership, the association governance, the links with the project as a first part, then how to contribute to the EOSC and making it operational with the task force and the science cluster. Uh, then the EOSC future in the landscape, because this is one of the biggest projects, it's 40 million euros to help to uh, shape uh, the open, European Open Science Cloud. And I'd like to finish with uh, this point, actually, uh, towards a successful implementation uh, as, a, as a broader view. So either I can uh, start and make all the presentation, and you can interrupt me whenever you need. Or if you prefer me to enter into a specific detail, you can uh, tell it right now or put it in the chat. So I can uh, maybe take more time on a specific issue if uh, this uh, if there is one who is uh, which is more interesting for you. So just before yes, starting, yes. let me know. Yeah. Yes, uh, I copied the main topics of Susan's talk uh, in the chat. And without the complexities of using Mentimeter, uh, you can easily enter numbers one, two, three, four to the chat as a kind of uh, a vote for a, a more detailed elaboration of the topic in question. So basically, before getting started, uh, you are in the fortunate position to cast your votes on um, which part of Susan's presentation uh, should be prioritized. And I can already see that uh, people started to indicate their preferences. That's quite good. Uh, we can give 
a little bit more time for people to cast their votes. And then we are going to have uh, just another organizational question. Okay, so it seems that the organization and how to contribute are the most important topic for you all, uh, which is uh, okay, which is good. So maybe we can skip EOSC future or, uh, or if you have time, of course, uh, I can uh, uh, spend a bit, a bit of time to, to present it. But actually, just to let you know that the EOSC future slide come from the EOSC symposium. So uh, even if I can uh, elaborate a bit, uh, there is nothing new uh, here. So, okay. Okay. So two plus three. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Thanks a lot, everybody. And we have another question uh, in preparation uh, because Susan and I know that all of you are uh, 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 have quite a knowledge about uh, EOSC uh, and uh, your you have your own personal interests. And we just wanted to know before she starts. Uh, whether you prefer to have a generic presentation of the EOSC or you prefer to discuss these specific topics right away. So whether we should uh, skip the introduction or whether you find it useful still or your preference would be on having more time um, on the Q&A session later on. Presentation would be good, says Paula. Skip the intro, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Even so far, so cast your votes, please. Okay, okay, we see a, a compromise, <laughs> compromistic approach. Peter says plus one to the short intro and then quickly getting into the specific topics, very good. Okay, actually the, the intro you'll see uh, is uh, will be made uh, already with the first topic of the organization. This is also uh, how to introduce the idea. So maybe I can, I can start. And as I said, uh, feel free to interrupt me uh, whenever you want. I'm not sure I'll be able to see uh, the, the question uh, while sharing. So, uh, Ergebet, I'm counting on you to tell me if there is uh, any question in the chat. Uh, if I should stop, uh, feel free to stop me. Sure thing. I will, I, I, I will take the brevity and boldness to stop you every time <laughs> Thank with you. your questions. Okay, so let's start uh, with the EOSC ecosystem. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's a complex organization and this is also why uh, actually uh, the uh, actors involved in the EOSC are not always happy with how the EOSC evolved, uh, which is quite uh, obvious because we are, uh, uh, yeah, there are too many, uh, too many and two different uh, actors uh, to, uh, to work on the, the building of, of the EOSC. So you might know uh, that uh, the, the idea of building the EOSC uh, arose um, almost 10 or even 15 years ago at the European Commission. So it's not new, uh, but it was quite, uh, so it was more in the, in the perspective of the opening data and uh, how to make, uh, to increase and to uh, highlight the quality of the, the, the research of, uh, of science at the European level and facilitate the exchange and the collaboration between the different infrastructure in the, uh, in the European uh, uh, research uh, area. So it's a quite long story, but uh, it really uh, emerged thanks to the Horizon 2020 program and especially the last part where uh, we had the first, um, the first um, uh, call uh, dedicated, uh, the infra EOSC call dedicated to the building of the EOSC or to provide and design a new uh, services. Um, so actually the, at the European Commission, the, the work has been made step by step. So the first step was to uh, develop and to, to, yeah, to, to support the, uh, the, the birth of European infrastructure, which can be e-infrastructure, that means uh, discipline neutral, neutral or research infrastructures that are focused on discipline. So they first prepare this, this layer, this European layer, and then uh, they move all this layer to something bigger, which is the European Open Science Cloud. So what about the organization? So you, I, I guess you all know that uh, already, the European Open Science Cloud Objective 3 
three, uh, which is here, uh, which has been uh, set up uh, during the, the first, uh, the previous governance of the EOSC, uh, before the, the legal entity, in order to explain uh, the, the, what, the why of the EOSC. So a number of problems uh, have been uh, have been um, raised, such as uh, the fact that we are not enough involved in open science, for instance, the fact that a researcher cannot uh, easily combine and build uh, upon uh, the already available scientific result, or that the fact that the uh, infrastructure at large uh, not share enough open science standards and practices. So these are the problems. This problem cannot be uh, answered easily because there are some barriers that I won't uh, detail uh, here, as you can, uh, you can read them, and uh, this brings us to the objective. Uh, the scientific objective, how to be sure that the open science uh, practices and skills uh, become the new normal, how the standards, tools, and services uh, allow the researcher to find, access, reuse, and combine the results, so it is linked, of course, to the fairization of the data, and it's open, it opens the door, the door to the industry. And regarding the society, uh, how to make sure that uh, our scientific uh, output, I would say, uh, can be uh, openly shared uh, with uh, the society at large. So this is the EOSC uh, objective three, and it's, yeah, it's, uh, it, um, it's a kind of good, nice picture to understand the, the issues and the objective of what we are going to, to be. So where does the EOS come from? So it's a shared vision between the European Commission, the member state and associated country and a large community uh, that I will uh, present you a bit, uh, a bit later. And uh, the, the, the general framework of the EOSC is a co-program partnership, uh, which is the, has been noticed as the best instrument to achieve the vision of the EOSC. And I will explain a bit more what is this partnership. So about the EOSC actors first. What is important to, uh, to understand here is that uh, the EOSC actors are everyone working, every kind of organization or person working in the scientific domain in Europe and even abroad, but let's focus on Europe today. Uh, so that means that uh, all the university, so the data is both the national and the European levels first to, uh, to, um, to make people work together. Then there is this idea to mix uh, generic and domain specific uh, topic, which is also a kind of a strong issue. Then it involves also strategic, political, scientific or funding actors, uh, such as the European Commission, such as the member states, such as the French uh, National Funding Agency and others. And of course, at the scientific level, all the infrastructure, university, libraries, and so on. It involves also private and public actors because SMEs, uh, for instance, are a strong uh, actor, uh, are strong actors uh, in the EOSC, and different types of organization, as I already said, university, libraries, network, also project, infrastructure, and so on. So you can, yeah, you might understand that having all these different kind of actors all together working to develop such a complicated thing as the EOSC is not an easy task and cannot be achieved in uh, two or three or even 10 years. It's kind of generational, um, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's the life of a generation of researcher and maybe we can expect that in 10 years there will be the adoption by the new uh, researcher uh, who are uh, currently uh, just student uh, right now. So there is this need to coordinate and federate at each level in each perspective to reach this common goal, which is a, quite a tricky uh, issue. And every aspect adds another layer of complexity with an incredible amount of time to build consensus and move forward. I guess you can uh, easily understand that. Uh, we have this kind of very low uh, experience at the level of the European project where it's not always easy uh, as well to, uh, to agree on some common things. So you can imagine uh, at this, uh, at such a, a high, uh, high level of organization, uh, what uh, it implies. So what about the EOSC governance model from 2021, 2027? So uh, there is 
three, uh, this is a three-party organization between the European Commission, the EOSC Association, and the Steering Board. And the Steering Board is composed of the European country and associated country represented by their ministries. So this is how the governance model is made. So the EOSC Association, and this has to be very clear, is only one uh, aspect among the one uh, yeah, one part of this governance model, uh, but this, uh, it has to, uh, to deal with uh, the willingness of the, uh, the uh, ministries and of the European Commission. So what about the EOSC partnership? So here you can uh, have a look at the, at the structure of the EOSC partnership. So as I said, there is here the steering board made by the member state and the associated country where uh, the EOSC Association, the board engineer of the EOSC Association has now a seat, to be part of the steering board. And uh, there is uh, so where they put the EOSC, the European, yeah, the European Commission is part of the steering board as well. And then you have the EOSC Association, which help to provide all the kind of services that will be useful uh, for the EOSC. So you have the core uh, service here with uh, the, the, the yeah, the, 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 the help desk, for instance, or the, the technical uh, points that uh, will be useful for all the services. And here with the EOSC exchange aspect, the EOSC service and the thematic service that can be used. And both aspect, both uh, side, the EOSC core and the EOSC exchange form the MVE, which, is, uh, his, which stands for Minimum Viable Environment. So this is the minimum requirement to have a sustainable and useful EOSC uh, regarding the objective that we, uh, that we uh, noticed uh, in the previous uh, picture. So for doing so, uh, there has been this partnership signed uh, three, five years ago, or the 25th of, of June last week, actually, uh, where the European, uh, the, the Europe is represented by the Commission. Uh, the EOSC Association uh, Inc. is uh, representing all the members and observers of the EOSC Association. So the board is there for, to represent the members. And uh, the idea, the scope, and the objective of the MOU uh, is to agree on the activities and commitment of the Commission. So what the Commission uh, must provide to have a successful EOSC and what the EOSC Association must provide to have a successful EOSC. So this, is, uh, this has been uh, described uh, very um, uh, precisely in the Memorandum of Understanding. And in terms of governance, um, yeah, you already explained that this is this three-party governance with member state, EOSC Association, and uh, the European uh, Commission. So the commission, uh, for instance, around with their activities and commitments, they have to take into account the input and advice from the EOSC Association. Uh, and the input and advice, they, ha they are uh, presented in the strategic research and innovation agenda. You remember that the first version has been published uh, in December, uh, has been presented at the first GA of the EOSC Association in December, 2020. And one of the main goals of the EOSC Association is to update the strategic research and innovation agenda to identify the needs to have a successful EOSC. So the needs in terms of PID, the needs in terms of service, the needs in terms of engaging with the researcher, how to contribute to the, to the EOSC, and so on. So the Commission has to listen to us, actually, to all the community, and then to, uh, to select some or to publish some call uh, which can uh, help us to uh, design and to build the EOSC. On the other side, the EOSC Association has to provide input and advice to the Commission, of course, uh, to contribute via in kind in different Horizon Europe action and to contribute via in kind in additional activities. And you'll see uh, for those who are, when your organization is uh, already member of the EOSC Association, that you'll be asked. Uh, most probably in September, uh, to give a first list of the additional activities yes, that you can provide for the in-kind uh, contribution. So some keywords, openness and transparency, dissemination and coordination, I won't detail uh, them, I think it's quite
the EOS partnership has been signed uh, during the Research and Innovation Day, so it was not the 25th, but the 23rd. Uh, you can see here a picture of the, the signature uh, showing that now uh, we, are, uh, we are entering into a new phase of, uh, the, of development of the EOS. Uh, we had first the previous uh, executive board without the legal entity. Then we have established the legal entity uh, in between July and December, uh, which is the EOSC Association. And now uh, we are uh, fully um, uh, organized in terms of governance, not uh, for everything for the rest, uh, thanks to uh, the EOSC partnership. So what about the EOSC Association now? So what so the mission? Uh, the mission is to advance the EOSC to accelerate the creation of new knowledge, inspire education, spur innovation, and promote accessibility and transparency. So of course, all this can this mission of the EOSC Association is highly linked to the open science uh, context and the open science uh, policy uh, made by the European uh, Commission. About the milestones, uh, so the uh, there's been uh, four funding members, Cesar, Geant, Gar, and Skik, uh, in July, uh, when they signed uh, the creation of the ISBL, the 29th of July, uh, last year. Then we obtained the Royal Decree uh, in September 2020. We had our first General Assembly, which uh, where, we, where the um, president and the board have been elected in December. Then, uh, and this is also where uh, all the members and, uh, and the applied uh, member and observer have been fully uh, part, uh, integrated into the uh, EOSC association. So now we have almost 150 members and 60 observers. Uh, so these are the numbers from May. And um, short point saying that when you join the EOSC association, this is a way to join the EOSC uh, partnership uh, as well, of course. So in terms of statutes, you can see that uh, there are um, uh, kind of, uh, so we have more than 60 uh, observers, which are uh, now uh, official members of 47, that some are still uh, provisional. They have to be adopted at the next General Assembly, and a few are only uh, candidates. And regarding the members, we have 21 uh, mandated members, so that means um, organizations that have been uh, asked to represent their own ministry uh, at the General Assembly. So they have a, a higher uh, way of vote uh, for specific, uh, for strategic vote. Um, and then you have either the member and the provisional, uh, provisional members that have to be uh, accepted uh, also at the next uh, GA. The board of directors here. So here you have Karel Ruben, which is who is the president of the EOSC Association, and all the uh, the, the eight other uh, board of directors of the EOSC Association, with different kind of um, with different time of mandate. It's between one and three years, uh, especially to ensure a continuity of the work and not to have a completely new board but to be sure that we can uh, keep track of the memories and uh, what have been done and how we uh, organized uh, ourselves. So that means there will be a new election at the next GA for three uh, directors uh, who are elected, who have been elected only for one year. Uh, so, and we are currently working on the, on the, the process uh, to on preparation of the process. About the EOS project, so you might know that under the Horizon 2020 program, there have been a lot of uh, EOSC, uh, EOSC project, uh, and uh, especially a triple that we can mention is part of this call in Fryosk 2 2019. So there, are the, there were calls to develop the portal of the EOSC where all the services can be presented and then uh, uh, are accessible. There are a few calls on uh, the development of new service and the inclusion of new users. And uh, one, actually it's a, it's a call, but uh, divided in two, two aspects on governance and policy, which, is, uh, which has been here mainly to build the regional uh, organization of the, of the EOSC. So here you can see the same kind of organization, but with the logo of um, some, uh, projects that are related to the Horizon Europe pro program. Uh, so 
you can see here the relation of the, the role of the, the, the project here, the Infraost 5 project, which are the regional project. There is also this relation with the S3 cluster here, which are uh, the domain specific uh, project, uh, um, domain specific project to uh, build the uh, domain cluster of the OSC. So I can mention in particular the shock project, SSH open cloud project, uh, because uh, this is the, 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 the one in which we are more interested, of course, regarding our domain. And there are more horizontal uh, project and initiative. This is why you can see also the logo of uh, RDA or Open Air Advance, which are, which, are, which are here to build horizontal uh, service. And now this is the, the, the new uh, Horizon Europe program with a few uh, new, um, some new calls, uh, which are part of the destination to Infraosc with some call uh, closed in 2021 in September, uh, by the way, and some other in 2022, still to develop uh, the, um, the DEOSC uh, as the, yeah, the DEOSC ecosystem. So I think, yeah, yeah, maybe <laughs> that's uh, What is important here to notice is that when I uh, mentioned the actors previously and then the partnership and the association, uh, this is really important to uh, keep in mind also the role of the project uh, because uh, they have they received the specific funding to achieve one part or another of the OSC. But that also means that uh, we have to agree and to work all together and to defend the same vision of the OSC. Um, so, of course, it's a kind of, uh, of utopia, uh, we cannot, uh, it's, it's not really feasible, but that means there is a need of strong consensus, but also a time for a long discussion in order to agree on uh, what are the most important points and what has, what, uh, how to build, uh, especially the, the OSC. So I think this slide is uh, especially interesting because it highlights actually uh, some of the, the challenges uh, that uh, we face to develop the EOSC, uh, the identifiers, the metadata, the fair metrics, and uh, so I won't enter into detail. And each time you have some projects which are closely linked to answer to some of the implementation uh, challenge. So you can see here the name of the project linked to some uh, challenges that have been uh, noticed uh, and mentioned in the SRIA here, the Strategic Research and Innovation Agenda. And this is the same uh, at the bottom of the slide. There are some boundary conditions to realize the vision we have of the OSC. And this boundary condition, uh, already also uh, mentioned sorry, in the SRIA, uh, have, uh, can be um, solved thanks to specific, uh, specific projects uh, that you can see uh, here uh, in the smaller boxes. So, uh, so I'm at the end of the first part about uh, the organization, the complex organization of the EOSC, uh, mainly in terms of governance. Is there uh, some question already or should I continue? Uh, we cannot see any questions in the chat yet, but maybe uh, let's uh, give a couple of seconds to the attendees to raise their hands and voice their questions if they have any at this point. I'm looking at you, dear attendees. But it seems that uh, we don't, don't have any questions yet. So I would encourage you, Susan, to continue. Sure. And then, uh, of course, uh, as always, the training session will conclude with the interactive Q&A session, so uh, you can always come back to this part of the presentation in the Q&A. Yeah. Thank you, Ajibet.
This is a kind of structure uh, to help to steer uh, the implementation of the EOSC. Uh, we also expect that the task force will liaise with the EOSC project in order to make sure that the work done in the EOSC project is also uh, useful uh, and can be uh, implemented more easily uh, depending on the, on the focus. To identify, of course, strategic gaps and area uh, for the next uh, version of the strategic research and innovation agenda. Uh, what, uh, what an important point is that only EOSC association members uh, can uh, propose and lead uh, groups uh, because the external can also be uh, can also join uh, the task forces but not uh, to lead them. And uh, the task forces are groups within the advisory group, as I already said, in order to implement certain aspects of uh, the EOSC. So in order to facilitate the work, we split some of the, uh, the, the, the liaison, uh, we split the, the, the board directors to be, to, in order to be a direct, to have direct liaison uh, with the advisory group. So for instance, I'm in charge of the implementation of EOSC advisory group. Ignacio Blanker is in charge of the technical challenge on the EOSC. Sarah Jones for metadata and data quality. William Widmark for research careers and car curricula and Bob Jones for uh, sustaining uh, EOSC. And I will explain a bit more. So I'm not sure I need to uh, go into detail with the working principles. So here you can have a look at the task force topics. So the, in, um, in bold, you have the name of the advisory group and, uh, the, and within each, each advisory group, the list of the task force that are part of the, of, uh, of the advisory group. But let's uh, go uh, into detail. Regarding the implementation of this uh, advisory group. So the goal here is uh, to focus on rolling out EOSC recommendation and testing the uh, applicability of the recommendation with research community and service providers. This is also a way to promote a kind of broader adoption of the EOSC, especially amongst the research community. So this is why we had these three uh, task force, rules of participation compliance monitoring, uh, to collect feedback on how to implement the rules of participation, PID policy and implementation, and researcher engagement and adoption. You can already notice that some task force uh, were already part of previous working groups during the uh, previous governance of the EOSC, so between 2018 and 2020. And uh, for the implementation of EOSC advisory group, the new one, uh, which we are not uh, part of a previous working group, is the researcher uh, engagement and adoption in order to facilitate, to increase uh, the participation of the researcher community uh, in, the, uh, in the EOSC. Regarding the technical challenge, the, the goal is really to uh, focus on uh, how to implement the technical architecture and interoperability uh, in the EOSC and also to design some strategic areas uh, for the future, uh, especially uh, like uh, this uh, topic of uh, uh, research software. So this is why we have this uh, technical, uh, this um, task force technical interoperability of data and services, infrastructure for quality research software and AAI implementation. You see as well that there are already some DOI uh, linked to uh, this task force. That means that they were previously, uh, they previously uh, pr published uh, some document during the previous governance of the EOSC. Uh, so the new task force are, uh, have been asked to rely on the previous work, of, of course, uh, and to go further uh, for the update of the next version of the, of the SRIA. Regarding the metadata and data quality, uh, there are uh, two uh, main uh, task force, the semantic interoperability, uh, about uh, the interoperability uh, around the metadata and, uh, and semantics, and the fair metrics and data quality to oversee the implementation of the fair metrics for uh, EOSC. Regarding the research careers and curricula, so this uh, advisory group came uh, also from a previous uh, working group uh, in the previous governance of the EOSC. And uh, based on the, the work done uh, by the previous working group, three task forces have been uh, set up. Data stewardship curricula and career paths, because we noticed 
And I think this is something that I've been noticed by most of you, uh, but the lack of uh, competencies and skills in data stewardship. So there is a strong need uh, in the whole Europe and we have to, uh, to get prepared uh, in that and to, uh, uh, to train more people uh, to, to, uh, to gain these uh, this skills. There is also a topic on research careers, recognition and credit. Uh, so which is linked to the evaluation of the researcher, but also to uh, how to address incentive for the researcher uh, to, um, uh, to bring them to uh, more um, uh, open data, to, to share more uh, their data and code and research uh, output. And the last uh, uh, task force is upskilling countries to engage in EOSC. Uh, in order uh, to um, help also the member at the member state uh, state uh, level the adoption of open science uh, practices and especially open science education uh, with uh, research performing organization and here we have more in mind uh, the university for uh, for instance and the last advisory group sustaining EOSC is more linked to the business model of the EOSC uh, so the, the goal is to uh, develop appropriate funding model with this first task force, defining funding model for the OSC, and also to work on the long-term preservation of data and services to ensure that uh, we want to provide or propose services uh, to the uh, scientific community uh, that won't be uh, sustainable uh, in the long-term uh, in the long-term uh, vision. So now you can engage directly uh, with the association activity. So the draft charters uh, of uh, the task force have been published uh, last uh, week or two weeks ago at the end of the EOSC symposium. Uh, so the charter are here to give the framework of each task force uh, with uh, uh, yeah, the main objective, how the work will be done, what will be the key deliverables and how the task force will be organized. So you can have a look uh, here. Uh, there is the link, uh, yeah. And uh, uh, there has been published uh, yesterday a call to join the EOSC task force. Uh, as I said already, uh, the task force are completely open. So I can uh, do nothing more than inviting you to answer to this call. Uh, you have until the 30th of uh, July. Most probably because of the high number of uh, applications that uh, we will have. Uh, we expect to have only one member per organization per task force, but maybe this can change. Let's see uh, how many um, applications we'll have, but you can keep this, uh, this, uh, this idea in mind. But uh, please uh, spread the word, uh, register, and, uh, and contribute uh, to the work uh, in the association. So this is for the task force. Let's move now to the how to involve uh, or to, to bring uh, the S3s and the science cluster uh, in the uh, in the EOSC. So the, 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 the S3 and the science cluster have a strong role uh, because um, so actually it's it's impossible to actually at least in my mind, so here it's more a personal view, but it's impossible to bring uh, for me the research community in the EOSC. Uh, if we don't focus, if we don't rely on the expertise of the science cluster because they know their own community. Uh, so this is really a, the, the, the entry door uh, to the ask for the researcher uh, must be uh, the science cluster or the S3 uh, organization uh, infrastructure. But, uh, but yeah, I cannot imagine how a single researcher can arrive on his own uh, to use the EOS portal without uh, being uh, brought by uh, uh, his uh, own uh, discipline uh, at, the, at the very beginning. So what we expect from them uh, is to engage with the researcher to promote the adoption of open science practices, to participate, of course, in the definition of standards and the development of tools and services that allow the researcher to find, access, reuse, and combine the results and to establish a sustainable and federated infrastructure uh, uh, to enable open sharing of scientific uh, results. So this is what is expected from the, uh, from the S3 and science cluster, but what can provide also the association toward uh, them? First, by supporting their work and highlighting their input uh, for the sake of the OSC. 
building from their knowledge uh, the communication towards the community and the service offer and offering the right framework to increase uh, the interdisciplinarity. And here, uh, this is good to see that the science cluster have already started to get uh, engaged and organized all together. Uh, there, are, there, there are, for instance, um, uh, several meeting between the head of uh, each coordinator, between the coordinator of each, each um, uh, science cluster project in order to uh, facilitate interdisciplinarity, to understand better the needs of the other community and to prepare uh, their engagement uh, into, uh, into the EOSC. So another role that I'd like to, um, to develop as a director, as one of the directors of the EOSC Association is really to establish a concrete liaison uh, between the science cluster and the S3 uh, and the board, a direct liaison, uh, with maybe uh, by having may maybe one of the uh, director uh, responsible of ensuring the liaison in order to, uh, to make sure that uh, the S3 and science cluster will be heard enough uh, and that their uh, opinion will be taken into, uh, into account. But this is something on which we have still to work. So what I can say to conclude on this part is that what, may, what makes EOSC unique today is not necessarily the, the sea of the EOSC, the cloud, but rather uh, the ability to bring the together uh, all the researchers and the research community. And I think this is the main, uh, the major uh, issue uh, facing by the EOSC today. And, um, and yeah, so this is why we, we need def definitely need uh, the, to involve the science cluster and uh, the s 3 Ergebet, do you want to say something? Oh. Uh, I'm watching the watching the time in the meantime, and uh, uh, the sad truth is that uh, we have uh, half an hour left from uh, the event. So I'm wondering whether uh, to forward you just uh, one simple question that is super relevant to this part of the talk, and we receive whether well, the question that we received in advance in a written uh, submission. Uh, so I'm just going to read it out uh, for the sake of transparency. It reads, very often in the past, people had the feeling that the EOS decision-making processes were not fully transparent. How to implement a new communication strategy for the EOS association? And um, I suspect that this question refers to uh, the relationship between the EOSC Association and the work of the EOSC task forces who are supporting the work of the EOSC Association. So if you could just briefly uh, address this, Susan, as a kind of a form of a short break, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, actually, I'm almost at the end of the presentation, so it's uh, I can skip the EOSC future, so then we have just uh, uh, toward a successful implementation uh, uh, slide, so it's uh, it's quite okay. Um, so how to answer uh, regarding the lack of transparency? Uh, that's true. First, uh, I don't want to uh, to. Um, um, what I can say is that it's not really. Maybe I can stop sharing while I'm answering. It's better. Yeah. Uh, what I can say is just there's that um, the goal is not to uh, to hide something in the ask. So this has to be to be very clear. Um, just to let you know that so I'm now part of the board of directors since uh, seven uh, yes yeah, since December last December. Uh, we've been asked quite yeah almost every week uh, by the European Commission on Friday evening to comment on different kind of documents for the Monday morning. So just to let you know that in terms of of uh, amount of work. Uh, since the, the beginning, the creation of the association, it has been completely crazy. Uh, most probably because the European Commission has the willingness to, uh, to sign and to uh, get ready with the partnership very soon. Because they were also expecting to publish quite uh, soon uh, the Horizon Europe program uh, that has been uh, now published. And also because the EOSC Association has yet no money because the fee haven't, hasn't been asked uh, to the different member and observer. So uh, we were only the eight uh, director plus the president and uh, kind of support from the EOSC Secretariat project, but nothing more. So um, 
Yeah, so this is why it's not really a lack of transparency, but uh, at some point, uh, and I know that this has been experienced by, by a lot of people uh, in the task force, uh, we, it took a lot of time from us, from the board, I would say the US board, to uh, communicate with the members uh, because of the solicitation from the European Commission. And once we started to communicate, we asked uh, the task force to get ready very quickly, to write the charter in uh, almost a month, to uh, be ready to present something at the EOSC symposium, uh, but people uh, didn't have time to know better each other, to discuss, to... Uh, so, yeah. Um, so I can only confirm that. Uh, this, is a, this is a kind of, uh, of issue we face. Um, it was also a kind of challenge for us as a board to manage the EOSC symposium, which was not planned at the very beginning, but we, which is part, which was part of the EOSC secretariat project. So not something coming from us, but coming from the EOSC secretariat project. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is this is where we are now. Um, so I wouldn't say lack of transparency, but a difficulty to find the right balance between um, between taking time to do the things and showing to the all the members the community that uh, we want to move forward and we want to have some progress and at some point uh, we made some mistakes here and uh, and I guess uh, it won't be the last one so there will be others unfortunately. Thanks but a lot. We are for fully aware of that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot for this super honest uh, reflection, Susan. I think all of us uh, appreciate it uh, pretty much. I don't know whether uh, there are any other uh, related comments to that before we move on to the bright future. If not, then uh, I'm going to give the floor back to you, Susan. Let's see those. Uh, implementation plans. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ergebet. So, yeah, in order to conclude, uh, how to reach a successful implementation. So, these are here again, this comes from these are personal view uh, that I presented as well at the EOSC symposium, but I think these are uh, important. Uh, and it's also a way to answer to the previous question, actually, uh, Ergebet. Um, so, what are the priorities for 2021-2022 uh, regarding the EOSC implementation? Uh, so these are the three, uh, I won't repeat, but these are the three objectives that uh, we already, uh, I already presented uh, in the EOSC objective three. Uh, so these are the three priorities that we want to, uh, to achieve, or at least to start uh, for, uh, for this year and, uh, and, uh, and the next year. So what is important is that uh, implementation, at least for me, is the basic level of the EOSC. So we had a lot of time or we had different uh, opportunities to, uh, to prepare recommendation. This is also part of the SRIAD, Strategic Research and Innovation Agenda. And the previous working group made a lot of recommendations about the needs, how to work together, what kind of rules of participation, and so on. So now it's time to move from the theory, the recommendation, to the implementation, the concrete one. So there is here a crucial role of the EOSC related project, as you uh, can, uh, can understand. And one of the first um, advice or guiding principle, yeah, guiding principle, uh, is that diversity uh, is, uh, is the key against uniformization. This is why we need uh, the science cluster and the S3. And this is why we need to take into account the different stakeholders, public and pri private, the types of organization and so on. So we don't want, or at least I don't want, <laughs> uniformization within the EOSC because uh, that means losing uh, the creativity and the potential of innovation uh, in the scientific, uh, uh, in Europe, uh, in the scientific uh, domain. So this is for the first point. The two other points is that, as already, as already said, from recommendation to adoption implementation, if we want to, uh, to, uh, or to move to implementation, that means we need to have a time where we can agree on the suggestion and recommendation in order to avoid to rediscuss them uh, every time, because this is always the, uh, the kind of issue. 
and at the end agree to be realistic on the implementation rather than uh, being holistic on uh, what we want to achieve, uh, how to adopt all the recommendations, uh, because it can bring to, uh, to nothing. And another principle is that uh, it's, I think you all, you all know how I, how I work, but uh, the bottom-up approach is quite um, obvious. Uh, uh, if, we, if we are waiting from the European Commission or, or the, the member state to, to explain us what is needed in terms of science, uh, we won't succeed at all. So we need uh, the, the feedback from the community, but uh, if we want to achieve something, we have also to, uh, which is unfortunate, but uh, this is also the, the situation, we have to limit the process of consultation. That means we never, uh, I am pretty sure, we will never reach a complete consensus. Uh, there will be, uh, of course, quite obviously, people who will disagree with the decision, uh, who will don't who don't or won't understand uh, why we did that, um, and yeah. So this is not an easy situation because of course it's always uh, better when you, you can all uh, we can reach a consensus. But with the diversity of actors that I presented you at the beginning, I'm pretty sure uh, it won't be uh, it won't be the case. However, uh, we need to find the right balance how to involve enough, giving enough time to people to contribute, and then stop the consultation in order uh, to take the appropriate uh, decision. So this brings us to the last, uh, last uh, guiding principle, I would say. We, have, we are here to play the game. Uh, that means that uh, we, yeah, the, 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 we, we will arrive to the end of the game only by working together. Uh, and only by agree by uh, knowing already that we won't be able to do everything that we want. And this is something I already learned quite uh, uh, with a kind of difficulties uh, during the, the six first months of my uh, mandate as a director of the EOSC board uh, of, of the EOSC association, uh, because I, I arrived with a lot of uh, willingness, energy, and, uh, and uh, yes, uh, hope. Uh, to change, to be able to uh, give uh, enough input to represent well the social science and humanities, to represent well uh, why not the French country, the anything else that I can uh, where, where I can support. But uh, but it's not the case because I'm not the only director, and uh, even uh, in, in I think it's better like that. Uh, but also because there are there is the European Commission, there is the member states, there are the member states. So um, yeah, there, there is not a single person who can do uh, everything or who can decide. And this is where uh, only the way of the, the, the input of the community uh, can, be, um, can be used uh, for a successful EOSC. So let's be progressive, but efficient and uh, ambitious, but uh, patient. Uh, and to conclude, I would say that we all are uh, the EOSC and that I'd be happy now uh, to have uh, your uh, view on uh, how to implement the communication strategy for the EASC Association. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Susan, for uh, so passionately driving us through the many uh, administrative and governance complexities of this giant endeavor and also like uh, bringing us closer to the many like to the manifold EOSC jargon. Uh, in fact, I think it was a, a lot of food for the thought. Um, and so uh, it's time we still have some uh, 20 minutes, which is uh, quite good. Uh, so let me open the floor to you attendees under the aegis of um, efficiency and ambitions. Uh, please feel free to uh, raise your hands and ask your questions first. Of course, I have all kinds of questions in mind, but uh, I wish to start with yours under any circumstances. So, uh -huh, okay, uh, I see uh, a head in the air. Uh, Peter, please. Yes, thank you very much. Um, also, thank you for this. Susan, for this very comprehensive tour de force through EOSC. Um, that was very interesting. I have a question regarding um, smaller organizations. How do you see them fitting into 
the whole EOS puzzle and what kind of sustainability or yeah model do you envision um, for their contribution? Thank you, Peter. Uh, that's um, yeah. That's indeed a, a very good uh, good point. Um, I would say um, that it depends on the on the kind of organization. Uh, you know already that some uh, and can we can we agree that here you mentioned more for profit organization or not or private organization or just to. So I would say yes, more private organizations, but both non-profit and for-profit. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so for uh, the, the private organizations, so they are uh, more than welcome. I think you already know that uh, to contribute to the OSC. Uh, there is um, in the current status uh, that we have in the OSC Association, there were not any uh, differences. There is not any difference uh, between uh, for-profit and not-for-profit organization. Uh, and here I'm not speaking private and public, but really for-profit and not-for-profit. And uh, there is this uh, willingness to uh, adapt a bit in order to make a kind of difference between uh, for-profit and not-for-profit, especially to ensure that for-profit organization cannot um, uh, apply to uh, one of the strategic position uh, in the OSC, but this is not the case for not-for-profit organization. Um, regarding their role, uh, in how, their, 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 the, 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 how the OSC can contribute in terms of sustainability, I'm not sure, to be honest, I'm not sure the EOSC can uh, contribute, I, actually as it is right now, it cannot contribute to the sustainability of the small uh, company, I would say. Uh, because, uh, because we are not here yet. Um, and uh, even the, the business model are still relying a lot on the, the money from me, coming from the, the member state and the European Commission. So uh, to me, this is not a, uh, this is not a kind of solution. However, I would uh, suggest to um, uh, to uh, to join or to be part of several uh, EOS projects, or even uh, the, what would be the, the best um, uh, S3 or science cluster. I think it can be an entry door to facilitate the sustainability, to identify the, the importance of the smaller company, and then to prepare its sustainability at the level of the ESC. I don't know if it's clear enough, Peter. Yeah, thanks for the answer. I mean, for I think for especially for smaller nonprofits, it's really difficult to be part of everything. Um, kind of, and um, but the sustainability models are usually only set up for the big institutions and the public players. Um, and nonprofits are in a particular space where they do not want to kind of charge customers for services, but on the other hand, they also don't have a lot of other income streams that are really suited for them. So I would, what I, if I had a wish towards EOS it would be to kind of establish a sort of um, funding income stream for services that really add value and that may, you know, get um, remuneration for providing that service based maybe on the usage or um, some other metric. And um, I'm sure there is uh, a fund to be built from the, the huge sums of money that are going into EU now to doing, to doing something like that. But of course, yes, it's uh, always a question of how to divide it then. Yeah. No, I, I know this is already uh, something discussed, but, uh, but I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it won't be in place before a couple of years uh, because it, uh, it takes quite a lot of time. But this is, uh, and definitely, uh, if you can join the, the task force on business model, that can be very useful, or at least be, uh, um, yeah, be in liaison with uh, with one of the the member of the of this task force that can be useful. Okay, thanks. I will look into that.
Thanks a lot, Peter, uh, for this excellent question. This is indeed uh, a big one regarding business models and how to avoid the end user is facing uh, the charges of uh, the, the service maintenance. So, um, but we have also another question which uh, may even be related uh, to this Fredo's discussion. Um, from the chat, uh, Bossi Maria Gabriel is asking, um, quotation marks, we have a limit, uh, uh, we have to limit the process of consultation. Another quotation marks, diversity of views makes everything harder sometimes. So can you give us an example of main views, diversities that can make the process difficult? Uh, what is the biggest challenging issue to this point? Oh, very nice question, Susan. <laughs> very big one. Yeah, see. yeah. Uh, thank you for, for this question. Um, yeah, I think the 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 the, the, the first uh, the the example of the for profit and not for profit organization is a is a is a good one actually, uh, because. Um, uh yeah we we don't share the, the 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 same the same view here and um uh and um we we know that for instance some of the the member of the of the esc association uh, our private our for-profit company uh, against whom uh, the open science policy have been uh, has been established uh, so it's uh, difficult now to see them as part of the EOSC uh, uh, regarding the fact that they were not um, that they, they were not support that yeah they, they are at the origin of the of the open science because of, of what they are doing. Uh, another example is um, yeah to me uh, <laughs> this is still on the on this kind of but. Yeah, this is the agreement on the on the standards and of the of the tools. For instance, in the SSH. So let's take this very concrete example. Um, you know, there is this word data that is used uh, everywhere by everyone in all the discipline. Okay, data. That's good. But what does it mean, data? Can we agree on what are data? What is data uh, inside? Well, yeah. Well, what is this? What is this, is this concept? And for most of the people, most of the discipline, uh, you never, uh, they never include the publication because publication are, are not really a focus in uh, STM discipline, for instance, or in other kind of discipline, because they are dealing more with big data as we are, uh, and they are not, they don't use or not use as often as we do in SSH publication as primary resource, uh, which is. And we, we don't do that in, in SSA. So we have first one of the diversity of, of viewpoint is here. Uh, when they say di data, do they include the publication or, or not? And if not, we have to make sure that the publication will be also part of the OSC. And if yes, we have to make sure that they will uh, consider the specificity of the publication, which are not, which cannot be uh, considered uh, in the same uh, perspective as data. So this is the first example, and this is exactly why we arrived to this new uh, task force on the research quality software to show that even with the software, the scientific software, there is this issue and we cannot say, say data at large. We have to, uh, to precise a bit uh, the, the view. So these are some, some examples, but there, there are some other. I hope it answers a bit to the, the question, but uh, I think I can speak for, for couple of hours to answer to this question, actually. <laughs> yes, so Maria says, great, thanks. Good, good, <laughs> Thank good. you. Uh, and currently, like, I cannot see any other hands in the air. So let me, uh, let us uh, conclude our session with an interactive part. Let's go back to Mentimeter. Okay, and um, so we prepared you a twin set of questions uh, to close our session with. We want to hear from you, uh, first of all, in which ways do you feel the EOSC could benefit you? And watch out because the second question will be the same, except uh, we replace the modal verb to should. In what ways do you feel the EOSC should benefit you? 
So we are going to do a little expectation versus reality exercise here. Uh, I don't know whether I can ask you, Francesca or Emily, to uh, put the Mentimeter code uh, into the chat so it's easier, copy, easier to copy paste. Or I can uh, do that as well. Ah, thanks. <laughs> you were uh, just as quick. Okay, so here again, a couple of uh, seconds of uh, silent typing. And uh, I'm going to uh, show the results a little bit later. So we started receiving answers. Uh, one that I see reads, is researchers to do the research, and find out the relevant data, software tools, services, and resources. This is a very inclusive take on a digital research artifact. Well done, whoever authored this comment. Uh, EOSCA's data repository, interesting, or like a catalog of data repositories. Also probably providing me the services to better do my work. I really like the uh, first person here. Uh, as a data bank for materials for scientific language research. Sorry, I'm a linguist teaching English for scientific communication. You have quite a cool job, congrats. Discoverability uh, of our research outreach to other audiences, uh-huh like this photo of cross-disciplinarity, community approach, sharing access to relevant tools, nice. Foster communities of expertise while preserving a reliable infrastructure, very interesting, super valuable uh, responses. Uh, let's just quickly do the shoot part. Okay, I think the code is the same and the question is almost the same. Uh, it reads, in which ways do you feel the EOSC should benefit you? Okay. And I put the link to the Mentimeter uh, to the chat again. Feel free to be a little bit critical uh, at this point. Has the slide changed? Uh, yes, uh, there is a single letter uh, difference uh, in the two slides. Oh, wait, yeah, uh, I see the mistake here. Let me just change it right away. Uh, you know, like uh, there is this, uh, slight issue with using the free version of Mentimeter, but it should be working now. I can see that the second slide uh, is on display now.
Okay, we started receiving the answers, so I'm resharing my screen again. Very interesting. Okay, to ease the onboarding of new actors as service providers in the EOSC marketplace. Yes, a very uh, sensible uh, reflection on the previous uh, episode of the Triple Open Science training series. Providing me open science data and tools by default. So I don't have to think about it. <laughs> nice. Provide a multilingual corpora and videos on the sort of data exchange data in quotation marks. Uh, nice. The EOSC providers should onboard, federate, integrate all their resources, data services, and other artifacts in EOSC and its marketplace or marketplaces, plural so that researchers can do their work uh, within and across uh, disciplines. Quite beautiful, but also quite ambitious at the same time. Isn't it, Susan? Yeah, that's really interesting, actually. I, I hope I can keep track of this because it can be useful to be discussed uh, within the ASK Association now, so. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> like once the once we finish the webinar, we can have a little discussion on data interoperability. Yeah, yeah, I'd be happy to. Yeah. Respect, you know? <laughs> okay, by providing a space to find support when doing research, making it easier to find relevant data that I may not be familiar with. Mm -hmm. So expanding, expanding one's uh, horizons. Very beautiful responses, by the way. Thanks a lot to all of you who uh, submitted them. So, as I mentioned, uh, your responses will not uh, go in vain. Uh, I'm going to properly uh, save and archive them. Um, yes, and so this means that uh, it's also um, it, like the Mentimeter will be there also for your after thoughts. Feel free to uh, add. Um, additional thoughts or you know comments that um, occur to you after the webinar. I don't know whether any of you would like to add uh, anything else before we close the session. If not, then uh, let me again take the opportunity to say a big thank you for your active participation, all of you who were asking questions, to all of you who uh, submitted responses to the Mentimeter or who uh, have been shaping the, the training event in any other ways. Thanks a lot to Emily, Francesca and uh, Tiziana for uh, organizing the session. And first of all, uh, thanks a lot for Susan for uh, uh, being there for us and giving us the possibility to uh, pick her wonderful brain. Uh, thanks a lot, Susan. Uh, it was a very, very uh, informative, interesting session. And I'm really happy that uh, it will be available uh, also like uh, uh, as a recording uh, for all the other interested parties who could not make it today. Thank you. Thank you all for the question and the participation. Thank you, Argebet, of course, for the moderation okay. and Francesca for and Emily for the previous uh, the organization. So, yeah, it was a pleasure. Thank you. OK, thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.